Here's a photograph that I want to do some non-destructive dodging and burning. When I say dodging and burning, what I mean is localized corrections. In certain areas here, they're just too bright. For example, around here, around this ground and this car, they're very bright and they're drawing their eyes' attention away from our main subject here. So we want to darken those down a little bit. Then there's other areas here like the pumps where we're losing a lot of detail because it's a bit dark and we want to brighten those up and we're going to do that by dodging and burning. So without further ado, let's get started and do this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer because we don't want to affect any of the pixels on this actual image. We want to protect it and just work non-destructively. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new layer and I'm going to hit the Alt key and that would be Option on Mac and just tap the new layer. And you'll see we have an option here now where we say new layer with the dialog box. The reason we're doing that is because we want to change the blend mode from normal to overlay. Now when we begin to paint with overlay, it's not going to show black ink on there anymore. What it's going to do is it's going to darken the tones. Or if we're working with white, it's going to lighten the tones. At the same time, uh, everything at 50% gray is not going to change. It's going to be protected because overlay mode does not show that. We have an option here for filling with the overlay neutral gray. If I turn that option on, it will fill it with a 50% gray. Now, this is useful if we're going to be using the dodge and burn tools because we need something to dodge or burn. But in this case, we're actually going to just be working with the paint brushes. So we don't need that. It doesn't actually do anything if we're going to be painting with black and white. So let's just click OK. And now we've got that new layer. Let me just make sure we only have the two layers here. So we've got one there. So let's duplicate that layer. We could do it by clicking it and dragging it into the new layer icon. And that'll give us two copies. Also, if you're working with the radial menu, you could right click and you could go into Photoshop here and choose new layer. And I show how to do that on another, another video. But let me just cancel that. So right now we have two layers, both in overlay mode. And we're going to set the first one to light. And then we're going to set the next one to dark. So we're just naming those layers now. So let's choose the dark layer and we're going to start by first doing our darkening or our burning. So what we want to do is work on these areas here and darken those down. Well, let's have a look. First thing we want to do is grab the brush. We want to make sure we have black as the foreground. And if it's not, just hit the D for default and that'll set black to the foreground, white to the background. Now we're going to go to our brushes panel. And we want to go under brush presets and let's find a brush to start with. Let's choose a nice 100 pixel round brush. That's a good place to start. Now under the dynamics, the only one we want to set here is the other dynamics set to pen pressure for opacity. So that means if we push really hard, it's going to be very dark. If we just barely touch the surface of the tablet, then it's going to be a very light stroke and maybe show like 5% or something like that. So we've got that set. Uh, if Shape Dynamics is turned on, just turn it off. And we're just going to work with that. Now we're going to set the master opacity. By default, it shows at 100, which means that if I press down here full strength, notice it's very, very dark. I'm just going to undo that right now. And I'm going to drop it down to a more reasonable level, like about 36% or around 30 will work. And that way, it just forces me to work a little more subtle. So if I push full force, see, it's going to darken it only 30%. Of course, subsequent, we'll get another 30 and then another 30 each time we apply it again. So we can still go to full strength, but just not in one pass. And, and that's a much better way of working. We want to work with a gentle hand. So with our dark layer selected, let's begin by darkening off the background here. Let's just darken off this ground because this is very bright and distracting. So I'm just painting across there. Let's go a second time. And we're going to go a third time because I want to apply the maximum darkening to that portion. And now let's go down the side here and also darken this down a little bit. And the sky. So we're just going around these edges, just darkening those. And then around the edges, maybe give it a, a little bit more. Almost gives it a little bit of a vignette effect. But that's that's really good. It's what we're looking for because we don't want to have people distracted. Now let's go in here. I'm just going to drop the brush size down a little bit. Now I'm just using the touch strips here on my Cintiq. There's, you can also use the keyboard shortcuts of using the left or right bracket keys or actually use the click drag option in Photoshop CS4. But I prefer to just use the touch strip on the Cintiq. It's the quickest way of changing that brush size. So we're just darkening those areas. Now let's go up here and we want to darken the front here. 
to bring a little more attention out. But now I'm doing it for a very light touch. I just want to darken it just slightly. Let's do the same up here. Just very, very gentle touch right now because I just want to bring out that detail without over darkening those portions of the image. Perhaps we could do it here too, just there because it was just a little bit bright. All right, so that's pretty much how we've darkened it. Let's have a look and see what we've done. You can see here where some areas we've done a lot darker and then other areas like here are very, very light and subtle. And of course we could turn that on or off at any time. You can see it has quite a dramatic difference to the photo. So let's choose a light now and we're just gonna flip these around. We could hit the X key if you want, set the foreground color for white. And now we wanna brighten up some of these areas that are dark, like the side of these pumps here. Let's go down there and open up that detail. And we're also gonna go for the top here. Let's do the same on the side there because it was a bit shadowy. And the side of that pump, see how that detail just comes out now. And we could perhaps do some of these areas here up, up the top here. We could open that up a little bit. Notice as we paint, it just brings out the detail there in those shadows. And maybe do that post as well. Down the bottom here. So I think you get the general idea. So we can just brighten up in these areas that are being plugged up. We can bring out some detail and just really open those up. Now be careful that you don't bring up too much of the detail in the very background here because then it will start to fight with our subject here and, and we really don't want that because we want our focus to go to these pumps. So let's have a look and see what we've done. If we turn off the two layers, here's the original photograph and then there they are when we've touched them. Here's a lighter area showing that on and off, the darker area on and off. If you feel perhaps some of these are too strong, just take the opacity and you can just drop it back a little bit. And we'll do the same for the darkening. Let's just dial that back just a little bit. And now we can see here's our photograph before. Really lacking focus. The tones are all over the place. And then afterwards, we've controlled the tones a little bit more, brought out more detail, and now we're drawing the viewer's eye into these gas pumps, which are the real main subject of the photograph.